Hey, how goes it? Yeah, all right. Um, mic check, quality check, stream check, how goes it? Uh, I'm Ken Bozak, welcome to Philly Crypto John 3? Three? 3, Trace. Um, yeah, shout out to Default Crypto for sponsoring the event. Uh, if you guys want to earn some DVT, some Default Crypto, all you have to do is like and comment on this video and people will win some DVT. Somebody will win a pretty decent amount of some Default Crypto. So all you have to do is like, comment, enter to win. Again, shout out to the sponsors and this is hashtag Philly Crypto John. Uh, today we're going to start off with Andrew from CoinOS or CoinOS. Uh, we're going to be talking about some interesting shit, so open your ears and uh, give a warm welcome to uh, Andrew from Coinos CoinOS. Thanks, Ken. Thanks, everyone. Closer to the mic. Thanks, uh, everyone. Yeah, use the mic. Use it. Um, yeah, let me see if I can get it. Must can I get nice it up? Be so tall. Yeah, I'll just stand like this. Oh, there we go. Thanks, Ken, for having me. Thanks, everybody, for coming out today. Um, <clears throat> so I'm CEO of the company behind the Coinos blockchain, which you probably have never heard of because it hasn't even launched yet. Uh, in fact, we're launching the token before we're launching the mainnet itself. We're launching Coin, that's with a K, on Tuesday on the Ethereum network. Uh, the token itself is actually fairly unique in that it'll only be mineable for six months and it'll only be mineable using the CPU of your computer. Um, <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. Now, the only reason we're doing it that way is to guarantee a fair distribution and a decentralized distribution of the token leading up to the mainnet launch, which will be in six months. Mainnet will um, be unique in several ways. It'll be a general purpose blockchain like Ethereum or EOS, except it was built from the ground up to enable us to offer unrivaled features like fast and feeless transactions, plus the ability for developers to create an unlimited number of free accounts for their users. So uh, it uses Wasm smart contracts, which means that we'll be able to add support for smart contracts in any programming language that compiles to Wasm. So we're starting with C++ support, but TypeScript will come soon after that. That's a top priority of ours. So people will be able to write smart contracts in TypeScript uh, and build decentralized applications that take advantage of fast and feeless transactions and the ability to create unlimited free accounts for their users which we learned from our experience working on the Steam blockchain that these are the features that developers really need uh, to build amazing applications. Uh, so the team I work with was uh, basically the core developers of the Steam blockchain. So we're battle hardened. We've been through 23 hard forks together. And after Steam, things happened with Tron and Steam uh, we decided to leave that project and start out on our own um, <clears throat> and build something from scratch based on our experience of what people needed. And so we spent the last seven to eight months building a totally new general purpose blockchain from scratch. We built something called, that we call the Coinos blockchain framework. And the two huge innovations that we've already released a white paper on are called modular upgradability and state paging. And modular upgradability basically guarantees that hard forks are a thing of the past. Modular upgradability enables us to add any feature to the blockchain without necessitating a hard fork. Um, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, it enables the blockchain to evolve. And if you'd like to learn more about that, you can check out our white paper. The other, the other major innovation is called state paging. And this enables the blockchain to stay forever young because it enables data to be paged out of blockchain state entirely, but paged back in when needed by developers and verified for correctness before it's brought back into active state. So when the developer or the user actually needs the smart contract, it's there, it's live, it's in active state as, as if it had never left except when it's not in use, it gets paged out. And so the size of the blockchain grows and shrinks dynamically based on active use, as opposed to just growing infinitely and never shrinking, never discarding even totally unused smart contracts. 
And so this, we believe, is the scaling solution. Between upgradability and state paging, this is actually how you scale general purpose blockchains uh, into the future. And so that's Coinos. Um, if this sounds interesting to you, then you know check out our white paper. Uh, like I said at the beginning, we're launching Coin on Ethereum on Tuesday. You can mine it using the CPUs and the computers you already have. If you have a GPU mining rig or an ASIC mining rig, sorry, that was a waste of money when it comes to coin. You can't really use those to mine coin, but you can use the CPU in those rigs to mine coin. So, uh, and we did all this to maximize fairness, maximize decentralization because the name Koinos actually means common in Greek, and we believe that it can be this common layer that helps empower people through ownership of all of their digital information, all of the information that's powering all of these apps that they use that are now owned and controlled by four to five massive tech companies. We want to give everyone ownership of that data, and that's the purpose of Koinos. And so, yeah, uh, that's what we're building. And I, if, if any of you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, all right, uh, I guess uh, I'm Ken Bozik. I have a question. Yeah, I can hear me on the live stream, cool. Um, so I guess who's the demographic audience, you know, uh, first use case on ramp, uh, you know, uh, industry or specific, you know, anybody that you're targeting as like the, the niche on ramp uh, demo use case, like a catalyst or something? That's a great question, and it's a really weird answer that seems stupid and super obvious, but developers, it doesn't seem like any other general purpose blockchain out there seems to care about what the developers of applications actually want from a protocol. Yeah, I think they're Apple, the ones who build they, the apps. Yeah, I think Apple developers know that all too well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So no, that's who that's really where we're talking. So we built this framework, right? We could theoretically make it do whatever we want. We could give it fee based um, transactions. We could give it fee list transactions. I mean, we have a great team. We could build this however we want. The reason why we're choosing fast and fee list transactions and the reason why we're choosing an uh, address-based account system as opposed to a human readable account system is because these enable us to offer those features that developers have basically been begging us for. Yeah, sure, there are blockchains that have fee-less transactions. Yeah, sure, there are blockchains where I can create an infinite number of accounts like Ethereum, address-based um, blockchains, but there are no blockchains that put these things together, put it together with Wasm smart contracts. And so, you know, the main net, while, you know, we, we think the innovations in the framework itself are the super interesting things. Though, though, those are the innovations that enable the higher level features, but those are chosen specifically because those are what developers are begging us for. And I'm talking Ethereum developers, EOS developers, every major platform for decentralized applications is begging us for these simple, straightforward features. And when you step back and ask why in God's name haven't you gotten these features yet, the only answer that I can find is that these platforms don't really care about developers. And so we really pride ourselves on being obsessed with the de developers. And every developer we've spoken to is super excited about this. And look, maybe only 20 developers will find these features and this blockchain super valuable. Um, but that's who we're building it for. We're building it for developers. All right. Uh, anybody else have any questions? If you do, just step on up and speak loud. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's interesting that you say that um, the, the, the whole developer-centric idea, these are guys that typically have to take orders from above and develop and do what they're told. How do you make the appeal to them to where they're submitting to their, their C-suite members that give them orders that know you need to use a blockchain for this? Like, how do you deal with that? That's such a great question. Um, <clears throat> and something that that, that I thought, thought a lot about because in my experience working on Steam, 
because I was the head of communications at Steemit. My responsibility was getting people to adopt the Steam blockchain, which had some of these features. It had fast transaction, it, it had fee-less transactions, and, and it had free a way of getting free accounts. It didn't scale infinitely, um, but so we have we had developed innovations like this, and talking to those developers, that was the thing they came back at me with, and we had no good answer to. So that's it. That, that is the question. And so <clears throat> that's why um, we put a lot of work into, so it, get, it gets back to the core innovations. So modular upgradability ensures that the platform can keep getting better faster with no bottlenecks. Hard forks are these bottlenecks for improvements. And so part of the difficulty with pitching a blockchain in a corporate environment is that you're saddled with the decisions of other people. So, th so there are two things. First of all, smart contracts give that developer a lot of flexibility. Um, <clears throat> modular upgradability ensures that the platform is going to get better, better fast, so you're not going to get saddled as a company with something that is stagnant. Feeless, the feeless nature of it guarantees that it's going to keep it low cost for them. Because that's ultimately what the question is going to be in the corporate environment. How much is this going to cost me? And the thing is, while EOS claims to be a fee-less blockchain, actually using it as the developer, as the company, it's going to cost you a fortune. It costs a fortune to build on EOS. So that is a big, that was a big pressure to develop state paging because state paging is how you keep the cost of running the network and the cost of running nodes really super low, which gets passed on to, to the developers. And so we anticipate Coinos being extremely low cost. Our goal is to make it risk-free to begin experimenting on Coinos. And I think that's the real, the real answer to your question. But um, that, that ties back into the cost of running a node. And we, we are targeting um, <clears throat> node specs of like eight gigabytes of RAM. And actually, one of the things we're not even really highlighting yet because there's only so much you can highlight is that Coinos nodes will be, are highly optimized to use disk. So you'll have eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, Coinos has a single backing database um, that is stored entirely in disk. So disk is super cheap. And you know this is part of the scaling solution. So anybody will be able to run these. Uh, anybody will be able to earn block rewards. You know, running these nodes, and uh, it'll be super affordable for the developers, for the users, and for any companies that are thinking about building on this uh, on this blockchain. Anybody? Um, so like Raspberry Pi, but Nano Pi, would that be a demographic of hardware uh, use or usability for it? That's a great question. We love our Raspberry Pis, and by the way, we have successfully mined coin on a Raspberry Pi uh, in, in a test environment. The, the smart contract doesn't launch the token until Tuesday. Um, <clears throat> I think that's a goal. I'm not an expert on Raspberry Pis, but um, I don't see why not if you can have eight gigabytes of RAM on it. Yeah, you can daisy chain them. Yeah, I don't see why not. All right. Got it? Everybody? Anybody? All right. Thank you. Thanks. I got it. All right. So that was uh, Andrew from Coinos, uh, K-O-I-N-O-S, Coinos Network. Uh, thank you, Andrew. And uh, I guess I'm going to introduce Nathan Hawk. Yeah, I'm going to introduce an introduce introduction. He's going to introduce somebody. I'm introducing somebody who's going to introduce somebody, all right? This is like a, a Justin Sun announcement of an announcement happening. But uh, yeah, this is Nathan. He does a lot of hard work. Uh, you know, Philly Crypto John is is a brain baby of his. Uh, shout out to the Crypto Shit Show and Integrity and, you know, hashtag Philly Crypto John because, you know, Nathan. So thank you, Nathan. And here he is. Thank you. I've, I've never been introduced before. Holy shit. So um, my job here, after being introduced, is to introduce someone. Um, to the people streaming this, 
we're going to get rained on today, so look forward to that. It's going to be a blast when that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the cool things about doing this for the third time is that just because of the whole COVID weirdness and stuff like that, I'm meeting a lot of the people in Philadelphia that I never even met before that don't come out to meetups and things like that. And that's really fun and fantastic. Another really, really weird um, byproduct of doing this during COVID is because of cheap flights and hotels, we've had people come from all over. So, I mean, Colin came in from, from uh, Arizona. Uh, our next speaker came in from Oklahoma. We've had people from Virginia, uh, Pittsburgh, Connecticut, New York, just all over. Um, really, really wild stuff. <laughs> Oh, my God.